All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining our session. Um, this is Youth and Adult Collaboration, One County's Approach to Systems of Care. And my name is Victoria Eckert. I use she, her pronouns. I am a TA specialist with NTAC and the Associate Director at Youth Move National. I will be moderating our session for you uh, today. Um, if you have questions throughout the session for our presenters, please drop them into the right-hand section of your screen under the Q&A portion rather than using our chat feature today. So it's my absolute pleasure to present to you uh, Anne Parrish, Leah Benjamin, and Melissa Adolfson as your presenters today. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Okay, so hi, my name is Anne Parrish. I am formerly the program coordinator for REACH program, Youth Adult Partnerships of Carleton County. Um, and we were involved with systems of care um, graciously through the connection with Carleton County. Um, and I'm gonna pass it on. I have Leah with me here. She is a young person in our program at REACH and got involved with systems of care. So take it away, Leah. Um, I'm Leah, I use she, they pronouns, and I was a participant of the systems of care grant stuff in Carleton County. And I've done stuff like um, with MACMA and Youth Move Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I forgot to say my pronouns. I'm Annie and I use she, they pronouns. <laughs> and hi, everyone. My name is Melissa Adolfson, she, her. Um, I am with Wilder Research and the state of Minnesota contracted with Wilder Research to serve as the evaluation team for the System of Care Grant. Um, I'm gonna provide a little bit of background on Minnesota system of care, but the stuff I'm sharing is not the important stuff. So I'm gonna try and talk fast so that we can get back to Annie and Leah <laughs> talking about the youth adult partnership. Um, so Minnesota was awarded a system of care grant that spanned 2017 to 2022. That includes a, a five-year no cost extension. Um, Carleton County received its sub award from the state of Minnesota in fall of 2018. And during our no cost extension year, there was a long delay in contracting between the state and grantees. So I would say Carleton County had about three and a half years of system of care funding and did a ton of amazing stuff in that three and a half years. Um, so Minnesota's approach to funding grantees through system of care um, is that they had these this like menu of options that communities could pick from. So four communities were funded to implement high fidelity wraparound. Um, six communities were funded to implement um, collaborative intensive bridging services or SIBs. And I have a link here um, to a Wilder website webpage with all of our reports. So if you want to read more about RAP and SIBs implementation, it's all there. But then what was really cool and rare for our state to do is that communities could pitch kind of an innovative idea that they wanted to test during system of care. So there were three grantees that were funded as part of that. The Northwest map should like have the, all of Northwest Minnesota colored, um, but where the arrow is pointing, um, that bigger square that's kind of in the rust colored um, is Carleton County, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. And then that little um, geographic area on top of that or surrounded by it adjacent to it is Fond du Lac Nation. Um, and they collaborate closely with Carleton County and they kind of did two separate things with their system of care, but still had a partnership. Sorry, I keep wanting to use my keyboard arrows. Um, so when Carleton County first pitched its idea to the state, what they wanted to do is work on a single shared telepresence platform that could be used by all providers. They wanted a single platform for easier coordination and collaboration. And the state had this platform called Video that had a lot of protections for um, health sessions um, that was kind of the preferred um, telehealth platform. Um, the reason they call it telepresence is it's not just health, it's um, doing sessions with um, uh, case managers or um, restorative practices um, implementers. Um, and really, um, the focus was on getting providers the technology they needed to use video 
to increase access to services and really reduce travel time in a pretty rural area where there's sometimes um, long distances to get to um, sessions and meetings um, and to increase collaboration so that a parent wouldn't have to leave work. They could jump on a session with their kid and their kid's provider. Um, during COVID, though, um, there was a lot of pivoting that had to happen, as we all know. Um, and so Carlton County um, focused on supporting providers with telepresence best practices, regardless of what platform they were using, whether it was Zoom or WebEx or Teams. Um, and they also switched from trying to work on the single shared video platform, which really just fell apart during COVID, and um, pivoted more on that a, a really strong focus on prioritizing youth-guided and culturally responsive values. Um, and then also during system of care, the entire Northeast region of Minnesota, which is called the Arrowhead, worked on really strengthening their children's mental health system because of the ch children's mental health crisis that was exacerbated by COVID. Um, what worked well during a system of care um, is that there was really this rapid adoption of telepresence. Um, but again, what fell apart is that everybody was using a different platform. Um, so one of the things that System of Care did in Carleton County was work on some kind of how-to sheets for schools and providers um, on how to make the best use of telepresence. And then also System of Care funds were able to be used to get iPads and internet access for youth during distance learning and also for mental health providers that were supporting them. And that's really important because Carleton County is kind of a big broadband um, black hole in our state, not just Carleton County, but it's in an area where um, connectivity just isn't excellent. Um, what didn't work so well is that the state backed video platform became really unreliable when there was a lot of concurrent use happening. Um, so even more providers were switching to other platforms. Um, and at the same time, the state was moving away from video towards teams and we're restricting use of video to only direct client services. So it couldn't be used for that restorative practices, um, case manager, um, you know, meeting with a mentor kind of thing. Um, and then our state's IT system restricted data sharing, making it really difficult for us to use the video data um, to evaluate um, how, how things were working. Um, and again, just uh, limited access to broadband in Carleton County. Um, so, um, I, I don't okay I'm gonna pet, pet, what yeah okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> you, I you can pass it on to us if you, if you would like um but it's blank on on our screen I don't know what happened to it oh you're not seeing your slide no it, it just went blank all of a sudden sorry everyone be patient <laughs> Yay, there it is. Perfect. Thank you, Melissa. Yay. You're a wonderful worker. Um, so this is Annie. Um, again, I'm here with Leah, but um, mm -hmm. we are, again, representing REACH Youth Adult Partnerships, um, which is is um, an organization, a 501c3, that works with young people ages 10 to 21 who live in or attend school in Carleton County. And um, so... Uh, before we begin to kind of how REACH partnered with the county um, on uh, on systems of care, let's just dig in a little bit deeper on youth adult partnerships. And um, REACH really, um, really does a lot of work with developmental relationships. That's from the Search Institute, um, if you are familiar with their work research and work. Um, so we say that youth adult partnerships are um, a conscious relationship that establishes and sustains intergenerational equity between young people and adults. It builds meaningful youth participation in decisions that affect young people. And so one thing that REACH really likes to, um, to, to promote is um, nothing about young people without having young people be a part of that decision-making power. So nothing about us without us model um, to really center youth voice and youth experience um, in all of the programming um, that we do. So um, then I'm going to, I'm going to pass it over to Leah to talk about those developmental relationships from Search Institute. There are um, five kind of key 
key areas towards building developmental relationships. Yeah. Oh. Um, for the developmental relationships, we have express care, challenge growth, provide support, share power, and expand possibilities. And express care is just, like, if I have a problem, I know my supportive adult will help me. Um, I think she's like a time of my life for that, or... Yeah, if you have one that pops to <laughs> your head, or any of those. Um, and then we have challenge growth, and my supportive adults expect me to do my best. Um, we have uh, my supportive adults teach me how to ask for help when I need it and share power. My supportive adults give me chances to be a leader and expand possibilities. My supportive adults help me discover new interests. Um, I kind of, like... Was, I was a part of Reach, and I still kind of am, for, like, uh, seven issues, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And with, like, Reach specifically, I'm, I have, like, um, an example of pretty much, like, every single one of them, but that would probably take, like, so much time <laughs> to, to go over every single one. But um, Share Power was something that was really big because there's a youth advisory board and it's full of like um young people that are like a part of reach and they're kind of there to um I don't know how to really explain guide, that. guide the decision making um the decision making mechanisms of, of reach so it it is them deciding what kind of activities young people want to do mm -hmm. what trainings they want to <laughs> be a part of um and then um who they want to partner with in the in the county w within the carlton county area mm -hmm. yeah. yeah all right <laughs> so that's a little bit about youth adult partnerships and how they are strengthened through those developmental relationships next slide please <laughs> All can right, we, okay. we can look at these cuties. Okay, that's an actual picture of Leah and Leah is not me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on the far left in the red, there's a picture of Leah for everyone to, to, to see. Okay, so Carleton County examples of youth adult partnership opportunities. So this is really where SOC, Systems of Care, really stepped in to help support the work that REACH was doing during COVID. It got pretty dicey. Um, we attended, we, we already had signed on for the Youth Move MN, um, being a part of that through MACMA. And um, so we were already doing bits and pieces of SOC um, um, programming, embedding that into the work that we do. Um, so Leah and a couple other young people attended the um the MACMA Youth Move Minnesota kickoff that was in the, the in St. Paul, and we had a lovely time there. And about I don't know, two weeks later, COVID shut everything down, yeah. and so then it was us kind of scrambling, like how can we stay connected to the Youth Move um, Minnesota programming? How can we stay connected as an organization and provide support to the young people in Reach? And um, one of the things that, well, I mean, you can explain it, Leah, but Leah was a part of a monthly virtual um, meeting with other youth move folks from around the state. I don't remember much of it. <laughs> it was years ago now. <laughs> but um, they had monthly meetings. Um, and I think it was kind of a, a fun virtual experience for folks. Um, one thing that did uh, really resonate with a lot of young people was that reach participants, um, multiple participants submitted artistic work to through MACMA's Youth Voices of Experience publication. So that was um, a quarterly magazine, virtual magazine, um, that young people, um, they wrote poetry, there were videos, there was dance, there were songs. Um, and one of our participants, um, did some really beautiful drawings and paintings um, just about their mental health experience. Um, and so the link is there and look it up. I think it, there's some really beautiful things that came from that. 
And that happened throughout um, the SOC experience. So there were multiple times that young people could submit to the Youth Voices of Experience publication. Um, one thing, oh, it's saying something. I hope you can hear me. Um, but, um, okay. So one thing that re, uh oh. Yeah, you the slides went away. Oh, are we back? We're there back. We we're back. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're back. So one thing that really came from the SOC um, support and reach and the county working together were our summer academic credit, re credit recovery camps. We piloted it in the summer of 2021. And then we did it again last summer. And then we will continue to do it the summer of 2023 here. Um, and there were amazing experiences, um, week long classes, but they were structured and like camps, more like a camp doing experiential learning, project based learning, um, really wrapped in those restorative processes. So there were morning circles, there were um, ending circles, we used a talking piece. Um, it was just a really, it has been a really beautiful experience and was able to, um, to give young people credit in core classes um, and also elective classes that they might have otherwise missed during the pandemic due to a plethora of challenges that the county was facing getting young people engaged in learning. So um, I'm gonna pass it along to Leah to reminisce about her her favorite <laughs> summer credit recovery camps. Um, we had a whole bunch of different ones, but I think some of my favorites were probably definitely the, like, the ones that I listed. There's Musical Robots with Troy. Uh, with Troy and Jer, Annie's husband, and we did a whole bunch of things like um, last summer was the second year, so they were able to continue on from what they did in the first year, which was they like built their own speakers, mm -hmm. I think, and then I feel like there was something else too that I'm forgetting what they did, but I know they built those from like scratch, scratch. and <laughs> they were like light up like little LED like boxes, and they were pretty cool, and then... Um, the second year, which was last year, he had them continue on with something, and I forgot what it was, but they learned how to, like, solder and everything, and then the ones who returned from the first year, we got to learn how to, like, program and code stuff, and we got, we were going to build our own, like, little, like, um, monitor stuff, but there was, I don't remember what I think you ran out that. of time. Yeah, we ran out of our own, like, time with that, and then there was B Camp, which was, um, the high school students that would come in and get science credit would be the, like the camp counselors and they were there to like help run the um, program because it was middle schoolers I think it mm -hmm. was that were like the participants and the advisory board kind of like built um, the curriculum yeah the curriculum for it throughout the week there was like jewelry making a bee dance battle and like um a festival at the end of the day and there was like a fashion show and they made like their own like clothes and everything but they learned about like the um importance of like pollinators and stuff mm -hmm. and yeah there was fidgety fairy tales. yeah fidgety fairy tales is also a really good one yeah, <laughs> if you don't know you should know like magma's <laughs> fidgety fairy tales are amazing yeah okay so um look it up <laughs> but you want to explain a little bit about the fidgety fairy tales? I can, yeah. Right. We um, they had like a week to learn um, a play. It was like the Three Little Pigs, and I think it was about like anxiety, was mm -hmm. it? And um, I was on like music and like tech stuff, like up in the booth. But they were given like a week to learn like their script for that. It was pretty fun. It was great. They had to sing, they had to dance, yeah. they're, they had to learn their lines all in a week. Um, like Lee was saying, it was three little pigs, but there was a twist. Each little pigs had anxiety. And yeah. so it was really songs and lessons about coping strategies and um, building a community around uh, acceptance and um, so it was a it was a beautiful little play, and they're mm -hmm. going to be doing it again this summer too. They're going to do a different fidgety fairy tale 
It will be Little Red Riding Hood, and that is about ADHD. So, um, so check it out from MACMA. They're super fun. They're learning. Um, we were able to figure out how to get young people who participated in these activities those credits, and that was so key. One key thing I want to say is that I, ha I have a graduating senior this year who came to me and said that without the bee pollinator science credit that he received, he would not graduate. So it did make a difference. And we are so gracious that we got systems of care support to do all this, um, to do all these learning activities. They were like full classes too, like if not almost overfilled. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to do them. Uh, okay, so well, Melissa, yeah, super, go for it. super quickly for folks um, who aren't familiar, MACMA is the Minnesota Association of Children's Mental Health, um, and I one thing I wanted to throw out too is it's so cool that Carleton County is able to sustain this and do this in 2023 without the System of Care grant. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we love to see is sustainability. Um, and I don't know if you want to take a minute or 30 seconds to talk about this, but what was cool is um, the county was able to buy podcasting equipment through the System of Care grant, okay. and they had a podcast club at the local library, correct? So the, yeah. beyond the um, credit recovery camps, um, youth That's in the right. Community. Yeah, it provided those um, materials and the, the the equipment necessary to do ongoing clubs and activities after the credit recovery camps had ended. So if folks really got into that podcasting, then they could join the club and continue all year long. Yeah, thanks for that, Melissa. Oh, was that? So I thought you guys had three slides, but maybe. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, this might awesome. be it, my friend. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, so um, I just wanted to share a little bit about how we also engaged youth in the evaluation, specifically for Carleton County. So in one instance, we initially, we adults, <laughs> decided that we were going to um, do um, try and do interviews with youth who were receiving mental health services. Um, and it was challenging to recruit Um and then we thought, oh, well, maybe we can do a survey. And even that was challenging to recruit, working with providers, working with the schools. And ultimately, what we heard is that young people wanted to participate in a focus group. And it was COVID, but they did not want it to be a virtual focus group. So a couple of us from Wilder um, drove up to Carleton County, and we met in a park. And we sat in a circle, not quite six feet apart, but separated from each other with masks on. Um, and it was it was a unique challenge as an evaluator um, because people had masks on, we couldn't read lips. And because we were kind of sitting far apart, it was a little bit hard to hear. And then in the background were these logging trucks rumbling by, <laughs> but um, somehow we got through it and we got such valuable, valuable information. Um, and this was, again, this was in the height of COVID. Youth were learning from home. They were doing virtual sessions with their providers. and it really sucked for them. <laughs> That's what we heard loud and clear is that they wanted to go back to in-person. Um, they wanted to have in-person sessions with their providers. Um, and so it, it, we just learned how very disruptive COVID was. Um, another PE evaluation that we got youth input on is that we wanted um, the evaluation to be sustainable for Carleton County beyond the end of the grant. And so we put together a kind of a how-to packet of best practices for doing surveys and we created survey instruments. Um, and what we did is after we drafted something up, we met with um, young people who are part of REACH and the Youth Advisory Board and, and others to get input from them on the protocol, um, on the questions that were asked, on the response options, which was um, just invaluable. Um, and then just kind of wrapping it up, um, we put together a summary report about Carleton County and that link that was on an earlier slide, you can find their report. I think I also submitted it with the summit slides. Um, but some recommendations that we came up with for Carleton County is um, we heard loud and clear from Cure Informant interviews to continue to provide training to young people on equity. Um, there were some trainings like Humanize My Hoodie and the youth really wanted um, a 201 level and a 301 level training on equity. Um, and so hopefully that will continue. 
um, more of these learning opportunities that are focused on youth interests and skill building. So the fact that credit recovery is continuing is just awesome. Um, and then back to that um, survey packet, um, giving um, Carleton County the tools and the guidance to um, continue doing the evaluation um, beyond the grants. Um, some recommendations for the state that we heard from system of care participants in Carleton County is um, the need to re revisit reimbursement um, to increase reimbursement, but also to benefit um, public-private partnerships like Carleton County's telepresence efforts. And then also focusing on more upstream services. So things like this credit recovery and podcasts to um, give youth a voice. And then also another big takeaway was the importance of authentically gauging with system partners. And one example of that was that during the system of care grant, the state held a children's mental health summit, um, but they didn't really get um, advice from young people. They held it in the middle of the day. So if young people wanted to attend the summit, they had to miss school. Um, a lot of acronyms and jargon were thrown around in the summit that makes it not terribly engaging for young people. Um, and there was also a really strong focus on reimbursement and billing, which left a bad taste in young people's mouth, you know, walking away saying, you know, I should be able to get mental health supports regardless of, of billing and reimbursement. Um, so the state did agree to meet with REACH's um, Youth Advisory Board um, to get input for future summits. Um, they had planned to continue having those conversations with the Youth Advisory Board, but my understanding is that that just kind of ended, which is unfortunate. Um, but hopefully if we keep sharing uh, findings and lessons learned loudly, um, the next time they do a summit, they'll um, implement those lessons learned. Um, so that's what we've got for you today. And we'd love to take any questions if you have them. Um, we do really well with questions, so please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Those last few things that you mentioned really did, yeah, I, I, I'm forgetting about, you know, the, the Minnesota Children's Summit on Mental Health and kind of the, what the reactions were for young, from young people about that experience. And um, so I appreciate you bringing that back up. Questions. Oh, are we supposed to go in the chat? Oh, <laughs> we got a word of encouragement that we're all doing great. That's great. <laughs> and thank you, Victoria, for the note about the pupper. That was that's my um research assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Any anyone? know if anyone was there <laughs> yeah i can see some presenters okay. <laughs> hi everyone uh i just wanted to uh thank you all for your amazing presentation and i have been you know in the chat and looking to see if there are any questions and i don't see any at this time so um, I would definitely recommend that all of you maybe put your um, emails into the chat for our participants, if you could. Um, and uh, I suppose we can hang out for just a moment if there are any questions. Um, and if they're not, we could wrap up our session. Okay. I'm putting mine in. Um, I have switched jobs, but please feel free to email me um, if you have questions about um, org. Okay, uh, if you have any questions about um, youth engagement or anything like that. Okay, great. Well, um, thank you, Leah and Melissa. It was really 
a wonderful moment just to share a little space together today. I truly appreciate sharing your experiences, um, your love for systems change work, um, and of course, you know, sharing your expertise and knowledge with all of us today. I also believe that presentations will be available um, to all participants. Um, and uh, just thank you all uh, for your uh, support today during our session. Any last words from our presenters before we end our time together? Thank you for joining our session and um, please do reach out if you have any questions. Yes, please do. We, are, we love to hear any feedback or if you have any ideas um, for your organizations and, um, and agencies that you work for, we would um, love to talk through those as well too. Okay, great. Thank you all. Thank you presenters. Thank you participants and enjoy the rest of your conference. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.